Greetings to all. I, Ummi Habiba Beg, with my co-authors Madiha Shahid and Muhammad Hassan Suhaib, are here to present our research paper on the title "Diminution of Vernacular Architecture: Fors and Against." As Hazan Fadi said, "Build your architecture from what is beneath your feet." As we all know, everything has its beginning. The architecture that we got today has its own history. Vernacular architecture can be taken as an initial point of it. It is an indigenous way of creating dwellings, achieved after multiple hit and trial methods using only traditional knowledge passed on from generations to provide comfort to the end user in accordance with the environmental factors tied to the culture and social tradition. either by the unskilled labor or the end user itself the selection of material and form portrays the relationship between people climate and nature thus resulting in creating a unique structure which unifies local population that is why called the architecture of native community the low tech method has resulted in lessen maintenance and cost utilities now we will see a case study that is of gurgaon the culture of the place has been touched by the love of krishna its history lies around the time of mahabharata cattles are treated as family members and field are taken as mother the they they start with them going to the field working there and then returning in the evening the evening is lighted by men sitting together in veranda and having hookah women look after their kid and make food for everybody it has a local step climate uh, there is little rainfall throughout the year now we will know about the old architecture of kulga a brief description A typical square plan with central courtyard can be observed in a vernacular dwelling which are known as chowkman house. The entrance is accompanied by a small batak khana. After moving a bit, we enter the courtyard which followed by the veranda. All the four corners are occupied by the rooms. The spaces between the rooms has kitchen, toilet and stairs. The entrance of the house is beautified by multifocal arches multifoil arches and handmade pictorial motifs they are basically of flowers petals and godly figures it has a low heighted wooden door the projected chhajjas are supported by ornamented brackets there are small perforation and jalis on the wall keeping it cooler than the outside the stair leads to the terrace which has an unusual riser uh now we will know more about the traditional technique used in the old dwellings the first one is courtyard effect the direct sunlight warms the air of the courtyard the warm air becomes lighter it moves upward the space is then taken by the cold air thus creating an amazing ventilation and making it a bit cooler from outside veranda veranda prevents direct sunlight and rain from entering the dwellings stone wall and thick brick walls has high thermal mass it helps in reducing interior temperature pakka burnt brick are porous and gives relief in humid temperature or atmosphere wooden beam structure are durable eco friendly energy efficient and aesthetically pleasing it has provide adequate amount of insulation from direct sunlight jalis has small perforation as can be seen in the image compresses the wind and increases the velocity of the wind making it cooler from the outside windows and ducts windows windows and ducts are placed in the position of high wind 
chhajjar and jharopas were made to provide shade from the direct sunlight it also helps in maintaining a healthy relationship with the neighborhood arches were mostly for aesthetical purpose and they also were used to give wide span without the use of vertical support motifs and ornamentation motifs and ornamentation were made using natural paint and they were mostly of flowers animals or godly figures entrance and approach the entrance had a giant uh, uh, multifold arc in it it gives a beautiful view for the facade there is a door placed at the center privacy technique these kind of arc structures were made uh, these these arches has diagonal view point it hinder the view from the outside but provide clear view from inside lime and mud mortar were used analysis so vernacular architecture creates an energy efficient cost friendly and sustainable design it beautifully depicts the essence of the culture and heritage of a place it is surely successful in safe keeping the tradition of people and community it unifies people to come forward and work for the betterment of their village and in turn helps in improving the situation of today's world as we know a picture has its negative too vernacular architecture take a longer time to build as materials are obtained from the local forest they are limited in number the height is also limited due to structural constraint there is lack of internal partition wall thus vernacular architecture is both perfect and flawed now gurgaon saw a transition in the way it was with time the slow and silent village of gurgaon is somewhere getting lost under the shade of high multinational multinational towers and buildings with influence of globalization and urbanization gurgaon has now become one of the fastest growing financial in, and industrial hubs it all started when big manufacturing plants got set up all classes uh, of worker travel from different parts of the world group group housing was introduced to shelter them mall and cineplexes were made to provide recreational spaces for the people transition of element so the elements were also changed thick brick walls were changed with single brick wall old style wooden doors is replaced by pvc or wood board doors windows and door windows and openings are now changed wooden structure are replaced by rcc structure the way of uh, providing aesthetic to the building has also changed jalis have been modified new materials like steel cement and glass were introduced the height of the plant is a bit reduced now there are a new form of arches were made stairs have been changed too now we'll look in the modern architecture the township of gurgaon is following the same pattern as any other township does tall building with repetitive floor design following the same pattern that comprises or that comprises of two four bedrooms living rooms drawing room kitchen toilet and balcony it has complexes recreation zone religious places sport club market gymnasium inside the complex there are two bhk and three bhk flats with same style floor plans on all the levels it has created a void among the people keeping them in isolation and busy in their own worlds it encloses large landscape and green area there is a kind of sameness in the form of building with the common use rcc structure made with modern and ex- expensive eco friendly material using new modern technique which has lost all the building and all the beauty and uniqueness of our heritage and culture 
the not so climatic responsive design is now not even considerate about the local material and doesn't work on the important subject of sustainability. Outcome. The study clearly shows that even if, after only using native knowledge and local material by unskilled labor, vernacular architecture still result in creating a dwelling that is more sustainable, climate responsive and budget, budget friendly. It beautifully defines and enhances the surrounding by being tied to cultural and social tradition. It generates a sense of togetherness and unifies people in order to work for the betterment of their community. On the other hand, the upgraded or modern dwellings just focuses on providing more shelter in less area. It, the monotonous approach has already stolen the essence of heritage and culture, leaving no speciality uh, of a place and its people. It doesn't even focus on the relationship between nature and people. It is also creating barriers and social conflicts among the neighborhood. This is a table showing the comparative analysis of the both on the basis of material, penetration, planning, construction techniques, aesthetics, portrayal of culture, social relationship, cost effectiveness, climate responsive, sustainability, wall, ventilation, thermal mass, passive cooling and shading devices. The solution. I don't know both modern and tradition has their flaws and benefits. In order to take away the threat on the cultural and social tradition, along with paying much attention to the ecological crisis, we need a solution. Integration of both can be used to create more sustainable buildings by incorporating vernacular elements in the contemporary design. The Hiliani headquarters in Gurgaon is the best example of it. So, talking about the Hiliani headquarters, the Hiliani headquarters is the best example of integrating vernacular elements in com contemporary architecture. Fenestration and windows were provided for luminance of the structure. Facade has a front wall detail. But facade had exposed brick work and interior has concrete work, saving maintenance price. Skylight ran through the midway, creating the building in such a way that it uh, provides lighting in all the places. There were mushroom columns uh, which were bolted on the top, the bolted top creates a terrace, with, terrace which helps in providing cooler microclimate. Conclusion. Globalization is the need of today's world, as it will help in providing economic growth in, to India. But the way it is functioning has to be corrected. The high-class techniques can be replaced with simple vernacular features that will make the project budget and environment friendly. Vernacular techniques have less harm harmful impact on the environment as it is climate, climate responsive, provide thermal comfort, economical and sustainable. The amalgamation of both the vernacular and modern architecture is the best solution for the ecological crisis that we are facing today. As an architect, more projects that focus, focus on enhancing the relationship of humans, nature and climate should be introduced. We have already lost a lot of precious sources that have caused multiple wounds to the earth. In the race of modernism, we are losing our uniqueness, that is our culture and heritage. But it is still not too late to rectify our mistakes and work for the betterment of the world that we have borrowed from our future generation.